Uh, so, hello everybody. Uh, tonight I realized that uh, I haven't really done a careful, I made some assumptions that I understand the United States economy. And uh, I just wanted to uh, take a look at what's going on with the United States economy. And God, there's so many ways to look at this. When I think about it, I'm just thinking, man, um, it's really important to study the currency, obviously. Um, and it's really important to study the stock market. It's really important to study the imports and exports. And from a useful side of things, uh, you know, when you when you study the the currency, I mean, it's kind of subjective. Um, when you study the stock market, that too is kind of depends on what people. It's like it's like trading baseball cards sometimes. So. I wanted to start, actually, I, I want to go into all the other areas. I'm not sure how far this is going to go tonight, but uh, but I want to start with this um, kind of a discussion and a careful look at who we are exporting to and who we are importing to and kind of look at that on a map and see what pieces of puzzle I'm missing. Um, so from this, uh, I'm pretty interested in Brazil. So I was like, wow, uh, look at this. Uh, we're exporting quite a lot to Brazil. So of the uh, $192 billion that we export, you can see on the import side, it's 900. That I don't know. That number seems even wrong. So we are at a huge trade deficit. So it's almost five times so for every one item that we export, we import five items. So that is a huge deficit um, just on import and export. I'm not even sure. God, that seems as crazy as my picture on the screen right now. Um, but um, I thought it was a little more interesting to look at the video like this with my funky situation but anyway so i would say of these i'm really surprised like you got australia here and uh, actually uh, tasmania is included uh, but essentially our big the places that we're making money from is essentially brazil australia and then you can see that there's a little spot here netherlands and belgium and uh, that to me is surprising as well as kind of looking at the Morocco here. And then you can see UAE getting quite a lot of exports. And just in general, this this should make sense, I guess. Like we export to uh, Latin America. Why it doesn't show Mexico here, I don't know. Um, but uh, so, yeah. So actually we are exporting quite a bit to Africa. And um, that could be a good thing because uh, obviously this is a new market, um, and uh, but it's just hugely different than uh, so this is like twelve billion dollars, and we got three billion dollars. So basically four times the amount is being sent to Latin America as to uh, even the biggest export partner in uh, Africa here. So. And then also, why doesn't this show anything to China? I don't know if this data is correct. So on the import side, it does show imports from China. We would have to. So we see of the deficit, about 300. So China, we import 300 plus almost $400 billion, let's say, right? From just China, that's equivalent to our entire exports by th times. It's almost twice. So that's that's pretty depressing. Um, we're also importing a lot from uh, Mexico here. You can see uh, that would be about a hundred, and that might be a lot of food as well. So we should. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a screenshot here of a couple of these, and we're going to come back to some of this data. Grab a screenshot there and another screenshot here. And we will come back to that a little bit later in a second. So we just want to look at the overall data. So over time, this will be interesting to see when it loads up, apparently. It's taking a little while. So uh, there's also global share, which is pretty interesting. So uh, this one is actually 
surprisingly helpful uh, for every country. I've learned a lot. So you can see that minerals are becoming an important, like of all, like everything else is going down as a percentage of the global supply. So you can see that services is perhaps our biggest and that's leveled off since about 2009. So we were really crashing for quite a while in the services sector. Um, and now things have labeled, leveled off at maybe around 15% of the global. So it's hard to appreciate what that number means because you know if you're looking at a very small country, um, you'll notice that uh, you know I mean even having two percent of the global market is huge. So uh, and the United States is just huge overall here. So uh, I'm just thinking comparing some. So there's little spots in here that would be interesting to look at. Um, so you can see there's minerals and stone is quite different. So if we take off services, I'm going to take off services there. You can kind of see the graph a little bit more clearly. And of the next, so services is number one, right? So, uh, and then number two, it looks like is machinery here, right? So machinery is about 10%. Um, that kind of makes sense, right? Uh, farming equipment and some other things. So I'm going to take off that one. And then you can see right here vehicles being a pretty big one, but we're actually losing ground on vehicles. Um, and it's been happening for a while, but maybe even a slow upturn happening within the last couple of years. So uh, I'm going to take off vehicles. And then the next one is chemicals here with about 10% of the global chemicals and that's a huge number like it's there's so many countries around the world and uh, america doing 10 percent. so i'm taking off that one so we're kind of just peeling off the levels now this is interesting so we can see that right here we were stone so actually stone was quite big and um it might even change to be uh, pretty big again now this is kind of a surprising thing so agriculture here shows uh, that it's uh, at uh, back in the 19 uh, 2000s it was almost at uh, 12 percent of the global agriculture so one in every 10 meals was served by americans um and the scary thing here is that we are importing so much more so we kind of want to look at is this Oh, this is global share market share export. Yes, we are looking at exports right now. Um, uh, so I'm going to take off agriculture. You can see electronics really started to die in around 20, 2000. That's pretty scary. Something pretty major happened right there. Um, you can see that that was basically a huge part of our economy. And today it's just... I'm actually an electrical engineer, so that's kind of scary for me. Uh, and I feel like, yeah, but uh, so here now we're getting into the last sector. So we can see that minerals was pretty much the only sector that really started to increase. And that's at about 7% right now. So here now we have metals. And uh, that's kind of been flat, maybe decreasing slightly. And the least is clothing. That to me is shocking. Uh, my brother works with some clothing, but anyway, so that is basically everything. So I'm gonna bring these all back here and you can see how this works. So the number one is services and then number two here being machinery and then vehicles. So uh, I would say the overtime thing is pretty interesting. Um, and you can look at this in two ways. So we're on exports right now. So this is the reason I want to start with exports is because this is like I'm actually looking to try to start a little business and uh, exports is probably what you want to look at. So you can see that uh, services is actually looks a lot more possible here. So but on the global share, really the only one that's really making progress is uh, down here is minerals, right? So sometimes this can be confusing so uh and then you can see agriculture kind of taking a bigger chunk and uh of what we're doing so uh and you can see there's others a big category 
chemicals and minerals. So this make may make more sense or less sense to you. And you can see on the import side what our problem is. So electronics is a huge import. So I would say, man, we should shipping these electronics across the uh, world, machinery, shipping that across the world, vehicles. Pretty sad, guys. Um, so uh, yeah, so those three areas. Like we need to change, like those are government policy kind of questions. Um, so that's a new concept for me to think about. Now this by partner thing is pretty interesting to see. So you can see who we are exporting to. So we're still on exports, yeah. So basically we're making most of our money in Asia. So basically uh, this Oceania slice is super important to me personally just because it's interesting to see. You can see South America, pretty big slice. Not sure how this how we export to North America. I guess it's Canada, being Mexico. So, so definitely, uh, and then you can see Africa here being kind of uh, maybe a new slice and who knows where that will be on the export side. So basically, if you're in business, you got to sell to Asia right now. So that's uh, pretty straightforward. But on the import side, we can see that Asia is uh, really, we are really buying from Asia, but not... Uh, shipping back there so that's interesting to see and um uh so this is the geo map again so we can on the import side i'm not going to spend too much time on that but uh, uh the surprise here might be uh, i think this is who is this germany yeah so not really a surprise but kind of a surprise and just seeing that london we're not getting a whole lot of stuff from england um and some stuff from italy here and uh yeah, so, and you can see Venezuela here and uh, some others in Africa. I'm just looking at the other details here. Malaysia, uh, Vietnam, and Japan being pretty high. So, I would say the big surprise here would be uh, probably Ireland, but there's a lot of tax breaks. I think that that's why there's imports there, but um, we're going to try to focus on the exports. So, in terms of products, so I was looking at this earlier today. And I was just surprised to see so much in travel and tourism. Then I went into the companies, and I'm like, eh, well, I guess maybe this is uh, something going on here. But uh, so you can see pretty much the number two is food. So that really didn't show up unless you looked at this one carefully, right? So you can see agriculture's percentage and services, and you can see others pretty big. So kind of like a big industry in America is just doing weird stuff. Um, but uh, you can see commodities and specific according to kind. Uh, not a, not specific, sorry. So uh, so basically it's it's uh, insurance and travel and uh, kind of this uh, services industry is number one. And uh, that's pretty true all over the world for the biggest uh, branch of uh, – what your economy is is with services. So you kind of see here that food is a big, we're a big export on food. And this is kind of why I wanted to look at this, just see, you know, what we are doing here um, relative. So, but uh, I would say uh, the other one I wanted to look at is these raw numbers. So you can see 5%, 7%. 3%. So certain industries have quite high. So you can see aircraft, airplanes, and some other things. So we could probably even, I think we can isolate this. Yeah. So on this, we can see um, we actually have quite a big percentage there. Oh, this is, uh, so most of it is aircraft and spacecraft, which is basically. Uh, so, yeah, but uh, uh, but then the, the other big industry, which is kind of a surprise, at least to me, is chemical industry. Um, so they kind of separate that from the petroleum industry. We can look at both. But uh, there may be some uh, opportunity to make money in these top ones. So diagnostic laboratory kind of stuff. Um, and... Uh, various types of polymers and other things. So uh, that we can kind of compare to the uh, minerals, which we see uh, 
petroleum oil is refined coal and uh, copper ore zinc ore and this is kind of getting into specialty things just for the united states um and then uh actually this is kind of a shocker right so we saw that we're actually doing worse in clothing but this is still a big part so when you look at this global share we're actually not doing a whole lot of clothing relative to these other industries so why that is is kind of confusing i've actually think about selling some clothes but it's really just maybe a trouble here in general um but uh, on the product tree you can see this is a big hefty percentage of what's going on even with the content and uh integrated circuits being one percent so um so yeah so basically services is huge so services is about you know one third of our entire economy and then maybe uh one sixth of our economy is food and uh we can look at that over time so this is basically the whole economy kind of breakdown but uh anyway i want to keep that as the story for today and uh you can click on this uh for imports and exports now i did this based on net not gross and uh net is uh kind of after expenses and i wanted to be sure to do it that way so you can see here that uh imports were doing about 1.1 trillion dollars and we have exports of about 700 so i'm not sure how these numbers match up properly so on this one it should exports of 200 billion but this one shows 700 billion so I, I i don't know i probably trust these numbers a little better here um because they seems like if we were in that far of a deficit that would be pretty disastrous there is this product space one that is kind of interesting um and feasible opportunities as well um that you can click on and kind of see the nice thing about this product space one is you can i think drag some of these it doesn't let you drag it here but you can see the cars being a, a big centralized component so basically you connect each industry and you can kind of see parts different ones here parts for motor vehicles petroleum petroleum oils there's a whole group over here which is basically clothing and you can see that uh, there's certain um uh, there's certain certain parts of the industry that are slowly connecting up and you kind of see uh, how this all works, which is pretty interesting. You see integrated circuits over here and these different bubbles being kind of important. And this feasible opportunities, I haven't really used this whole lot, um, but you can see uh, they got these estimates and uh, obviously cars and these are the size of these opportunities. But... Uh, electronic integrated circuits so i'm not sure how this what the distance calculation opportunity gain i don't know what this means so maybe there's uh different uh looks like they're considering integrated circuits here so you can see um so i think complexity is how difficult and then opportunity gain so but basically integrated circuits and uh this is kind of like uh electronics so i don't know i don't know if i agree with everything here so i mean it's uh you know i i think the global share one this is why this is so important is that uh you can kind of see what we're actually doing better in so there's certain ones that uh we are trying to do better in or as a percentage of the global economy um so really services is kind of made flat which is kind of good because at least it's not going down and um so on but uh but the feasibility map is still pretty cool so there's probably opportunity gain looks like it shifts a little bit and uh you can see uh different ones here so uh maybe these are uh negative opportunity gains i'm not even sure so what 
why they would consider some of these negative opportunities is interesting. So this one looks to be kind of in the middle here. I'm not can't even grab it, but uh, but basically you can see gold being a just slight negative opportunity. So how they do these calculations, you know, that's kind of would be important to check. Um, and it looks like you can um, kind of uh, isolate them as well. So you can maybe look at just electronics and kind of uh, distance. I would love to know what their distance calculation is here. Um, but uh, uh, but yeah, so and this could be how it's just kind of a super interesting graph just to see. So, um, but uh, anyway, check this out. You can do Atlas, just search for Atlas, Harvard Atlas of Economic Complexity, and you can kind of grab it. And you can pick different countries. Um, there are ways, I think you can change this by product. So, if you're interested in a particular product, you can change this. And then under this one, you can pick. You know precisely what product you're interested in so there's just a ton of them so for example um it looked like uh let's just look at agriculture here for a second and you can kind of see like who we are dealing with for agriculture so you can see quite a lot of agriculture being exported to uh, europe so if you're working on food uh, a lot of people export that food to europe so and then to Asia so uh, and this just helps kind of clear your mind of like what what's going on so um, and um, yes yeah, so let's just look at maybe one more one if we can here we can grab this and um, let's just see the electronics industry for exports it said that that was good one so in general exporting right back to China so and also to uh, Europe and then even to Mexico here you can see pretty big export so uh, but uh, in general there's a lot of stuff here and um, I for sure recommend it and for some reason this is showing 2.48 trillion for exports now so what's our imports 2.9 anyway it can, it can be confusing so uh, make sure that uh yeah you just try to take a look maybe figure out some things yourself let me know what you think i hope you enjoyed uh this study